distinguished ladies and gentlemen, ambassadors who are here with us today, thank you so much. It is really a privilege and honor to be here to mark the fourth anniversary of the dedication of the Victims of Communism Memorial. I especially want to commend Lee Edwards, the chairman of the Memorial Foundation, who worked with my father, Lev Dobriansky, Ambassador Lev Dobriansky, for many, many years on this very, very important effort. I know that my father, a fierce anti-communist and champion of freedom and democracy, if he were here today, he'd be incredibly proud indeed. But I'm heartened by the fact that I know that his memory is preserved in the legacy that we honor here today. I also want to recognize Annette Lantos, my dear friend, and also remember back to the unveiling of the memorial when your husband was here and gave such a passionate and poignant speech that was most memorable, and as was always the case, not with a note in sight. And we really miss him and really appreciate your dedication. The dedication of this memorial coincided with the anniversary of President Reagan's unequivocal demand for the communists to tear down the Berlin Wall. President Reagan believed firmly that, quote, freedom is one of the deepest and noblest aspirations of the human spirit, unquote. Well, 23 years ago, as we know, the people of Central and Eastern Europe carried forward the call for freedom that swept the continent. They risked their lives to liberate their nations from tyranny and brutality. Hundreds of thousands died in the process, but their bravery was met with the triumph of democracy. And we know that across the globe, there are many, many others, and I look across this audience and thinking of so many different parts of the world where there are those who also have put their own lives on the line in Asia, Latin America, and elsewhere. We know that the forces of tyranny continue to plague the citizens of the world today. Totalitarianism, dictatorship, and communism comprise the God-given rights of individuals around the globe. Communism alone has victimized more than 100 million men, women, and children. Many have lost their lives, while others have been deprived to those very basic fundamental freedoms and rights to which they are entitled. This memorial, the goddess of democracy, first erected by students in Tiananmen Square, reminds us of the persistence of this struggle. And I also see Harry Wu here today, and welcome to you. It was dedicated to ensure that the crimes of the 20th century never be repeated that the horrors of the Cold War will never be forgotten. So as we reflect on this difficult history, we commemorate the sacrifices made by those individuals who fought for their rights and very dignity. We recognize the courage and the determination they have inspired. And as we celebrate the progress the world has made in the years that have followed, we are also reminded that Nonviolent democratic transition is possible, and we've seen it time and again. Pluralism, free media, rule of law, respect for human rights can replace and prevent the abuse of power. The path to liberty is long, but it is a path that has, in fact, been paved. As Annette Lanto said, and I want to repeat, President Reagan famously said, quote, it is the march of freedom and democracy which we will leave communism on the ash heap of history, as it has left other tyrannies which stifle the freedom and muzzle the self-expression of the people. So as we gather here today, we look very much forward to a future that will leave the forces of evil in our way, and we renew our commitment to support the struggle for freedom, democracy, and self-determination around the globe. Again, I'm very honored to be here today, and I know that my father, Ambassador Lev Dobriansky, I know he is here with us. Thank you so much. <laughs>